Hello, welcome to Simon Shed and welcome to update number 15 of Bodnam Woods, my N-Gage model railway, railway layout. Uh, you probably knew that by now, but anyway, I've been doing some scenic updates. Uh, I've had a couple of minor disasters, which I'll tell you about. Um, my E-Link, Hornby E-Link, has completely died and magically resurrected itself, so I'll tell you about that. So yeah. I've uh, got a bit of a sore throat, so apologies if I sound a bit croaky, but uh, I'm not going to let that stop me, and I have a cunning plan to keep up the energy levels, which is espresso. So uh, here's what's coming up. Pond dipping. Another leak. Scrap. And a pub lunch. So, as we make our way to the layout, you'll notice... I actually had a bit of a tidy up and you can see bits of desk which is quite an achievement considering the piles and piles of scenery and uh, rubbish that was accumulating on there so it's almost tidy not quite I've been doing a bit of static grassing as you can see with my electric tea strainer so uh, that's a bit tidier now onto the layout uh, I think we'll start over here with the pond. Um, I just sort of absent-mindedly uh, was tidying up and plonked a couple of locos down on top of the uh, on top of the water here, uh, and thought nothing of it because you know it's rock solid. It's been there for for months and it's rock solid. Um, however, I came back the next day or a couple of days later and uh, lifted the locos off. And where each wheel was, there were grooves that had dug into the water. So, uh, yeah, had a huge panic about that and thought I'd have to redo the whole lake again, uh, which would not have been good. Um, so I was frantically trying different things to try and uh, figure out how to fix it, whether I could put another layer of water on top, or um, it's the Woodland Scenics Realistic Water. Um, but what I actually did <clears throat> is uh, got the heater, just the, the normal fan heater thingy, held it close to here and it eventually starts to go a little bit soft and if you're very careful, not to burn your fingers because it does get really hot, you can actually sort of manipulate the surface of the water, it sort of starts turning back into a liquid, so fortunately I don't think you can see actually look you can sort of see a fingerprint there so I had to sort of modge it around with my fingers to, to, uh, to repair it so while we're over this section of the layout I might as well show you this uh, which I have mentioned before that I was going to do uh, a little sort of scrap scene over here so um, I've got um, some old track there underneath the wagon and uh, the weathering on it is just done with acrylic paint so just weathered up with various acrylics and uh, I actually cut away some of the um, foam underlay to sort of set the track into it so it looks like an old sort of sunken track that maybe uh, used to come off this line or something so weathered that up and uh, bedded it in and destroyed a wagon as you can see I sort of agonised over that for ages because I couldn't really bring myself to uh, chop up this pristine wagon but eventually uh, got the nerve to do it and uh, yeah just hacked it about with a Stanley knife pulled one of the wheels off as you can see there uh, rusted it all up just again with just acrylic uh, paint supplied with a brush various different sort of washes and different colours um, <clears throat> and that's that's turned out okay I'm happy with that little scene uh, we've also got behind the wagon uh, so I just pulled some old flexi track apart and 
chopped up all the sleepers, stacked them, uh, sort of glued them into stacks and obviously that leaves you with the rails uh, which I chopped up and heavily rusted up with acrylic paint again um, I might add some more sort of weeds growing up through the through the concrete but I've added a bit of a bit of static grass, grass in a few patches and the other things are just lolly sticks, plastic lolly sticks chopped up and painted uh, should have stuck them the other way around because the, the back the back there looks better than the front I think but never mind and just some wooden lolly sticks just chopped up and painted with watered down acrylic to sort of wood stain it, make it look a bit like old planks of wood so happy with that little scene there the other minor disaster I mentioned is we've had a fortunately a tiny little leak uh, nothing on the scale um, of the last one that destroyed most of the layout fortunately but as you will know if, uh, certainly if you've been in the UK uh, the last month or so probably more. Um, we've had nothing but rain and winds and storms and floods and uh, yeah the shed's taken a battering. It certainly tested the new roof and um, it's held up pretty well apart from as you can see here it's somehow got a bit of a splash on there which fortunately is only that end section there so I can just replace that and it's easily fixable but can't really work out where it's come from I think it's just the really high winds I was in here when it really was windy and it was actually moving the whole the whole wall the whole walls were moving it was sort of leaning over in the wind it was quite scary but uh, hopefully brighter skies ahead uh, and as is usually the way those of you with YouTube channels will know as soon as you start filming a massive helicopter or airplane flies overhead which I'm just waiting to go okay we're ready to go again now uh, the Hornby e-link you can see there next to the select uh, I've been using for about six seven months now and my uh, sort of unboxing and review of it is by far my po most popular most watched video um, I was thinking of doing another sort of uh, more in-depth guide to it or a sort of update to the review but uh, to be honest I watched the review again and I couldn't really think of anything to add to what I've, I've already said so uh, maybe just do a few little uh, tips like um, adding in DCC points uh, things like that's that's the question I get asked most how do you set up a, a DCC points with the e-link if they're not Hornby points or if they're not in the list of points that you get so uh, if you do have any e-link questions let me know and I'll, uh, I'll make a video uh, but yes what I wanted to say about the e-link is it completely died uh, I was using it quite happily uh, setting up the because you can set up a sort of speed factor for each loco so if you set each loco running at 30 miles an hour on the controller then they will all all the locos will actually go the same speed. Uh, so you just end, you just time the locos around a certain length of track and enter the time, and it works it out for you. Uh, however, halfway through that, it said updating firmware to 1.04, which I'm sure it had already downloaded, and then it said update failed, and the light started flashing, and that was it. it wouldn't respond at all. So uh, emailed Hornby support from their website uh, and started frantically searching around the internet for answers and gave up, came back to it, had another look and just happened to read this comment because uh, I hadn't had a response from, from Hornby uh, about how this guy kept rebooting, restarting Railmaster and plugging it in and out and eventually it uh, updated itself again. So. Uh, I tried that and sure enough after about five or six times it uh, updated its firmware again and uh, after a couple more restarts where it came up with more error messages 
uh, it eventually worked so it's uh, it's come back to life fortunately which is good because uh, <clears throat> I was thinking um, of replacing it with the uh, what's it called the ESU Ecos, which is rather expensive. But uh, every time I watch one of uh, Graham Fulston's videos, I see the the sort of blue glow from the uh, Ecos and uh, look at it with envy. And uh, also, uh, it's hover motion. It's got one as well. So uh, I'm very jealous of you guys, and uh, I may well get one of those. Ecos ESU uh, ESU Ecos uh, controllers at some point in the future because they do look rather rather nice. The uh, for the price the Hornby e Link's absolutely fine, but uh, it has its quirks and it's quite fiddly to use. I found, but uh, yeah, for the price it's it's okay, and uh, I'll stick with it for now and see. Apparently they're bringing out. Uh, like a loco detection, or there's a couple of loco detection products coming that they've patented, um, and they're just waiting to release those. Um, but they've been saying that for about at least six months now, so uh, I'm sure it'll turn up at some point. When I have no idea, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll check that out and almost certainly get it and do a review when they that the e-link loco detection stuff comes out but enough about that let's have a look at uh, some of the bits I've done on the layout uh, one thing I didn't mention last time was the uh, this little I've stuck it down there the uh, Ankerton models um, you get it as a wooden kit it's a security guard hut so I thought uh, that would be rather appropriate there at the entrance to the brewery so uh painted that up and uh, yeah, glued the wooden kit together and painted it up. I think that looks quite good. Obviously the locos in the yard there are just a temporary thing. Uh, and I got a load more barrels uh, off eBay. They're just sort of um, plaster, plaster moulds and just painted those up. So we've got some more barrels for the brewery. Um, I've done some more fencing as well along here, putting in the gates and uh, some bushes. Added some more trees here, some more static grass. Obviously, got to hoover up the remnants of that and uh, tidy that all up. Yet, I'm sort of in the middle of doing that at the moment. Moving down to this end, I think I'm going to reinstate this signal box because I've got a nice little gap here that uh, I'm not sure what to do with. So. Uh, I think I'm going to put the signal box somewhere, somewhere on there, uh, and sort of blend that in. Do some static grass and get rid of that concrete, or most of it, I think. But as you can see, I've uh, sort of made an end to the road, fenced that off, and we've got a couple more trees. And what's what I'm in the middle of doing here is creating a little bus stop. So the idea is that's just uh, a little turning point and this uh, is the bus stop so the buses come in here and go out there. Hence the uh, no entry signs which I'm going to try and show you there. They are just scale scenes from the roads and pavements kit printed out and stuck onto a paper clip. And it's very, very fiddly to cut those out, those tiny little circles. Um, I'll show you. I've done some other, some other signs as well. Uh, what have we got? So here we've got a no waiting sign, and uh, I've done some speed limit signs. There we go, some speed limit signs up there. As I say, very, very fiddly to do those, but I'm pleased with how they've turned out. I can't cut them any neater than that. They are just so, so tiny. I mean, you can see how tiny they are compared to my finger. So yeah, again, here I'm uh, in the middle of doing this bit. The um, reason I stopped, uh, I was printing out the scale scenes uh, waiting shelter, I think it's for a station platform, but I'm going to use it as a bus 
waiting shelter, uh, like a bus stop, uh, shel a bus shelter. Um, but yeah, the printer ran out of ink, so uh, waiting for printer cartridges. So I thought I may as well do an update now. So uh, I'm going to grass the area behind there, a bit more static grass, and uh, yeah, stick in a, a bus stop. Um, using the scale scenes uh, road kit that's got the bus stop sort of printed on the tarmac, so I'll put that in. Uh, finish the grass off. As you can see, I've done a bit of fencing around it and sort of blend that to uh, pavement, which again is scale scenes uh, stuff stuck onto card. I am a fan of the scale scene stuff. So that will be a little bus stop. So the final thing, I have dotted a few more trees around here, here, along there. Uh, but apart from that, the final thing I've been working on is the pub and pub garden scene. So as you can see there, I've uh, fenced that off and uh, blended the tarmac in a little bit. Still, you can obviously see the lines. I'm going to try and find a way of hiding that. Uh, obviously added some bushes along the front entrance and, and a fence along the road and yeah a couple of trees and some people and picnic tables so the picnic tables I bought off eBay uh, I had a couple of goes at making them myself and it didn't go too well they just weren't uh, anywhere near as neat as these so uh, I just bought these off eBay for about five quid uh, and stuck them down. The people uh, also bought off eBay. Um, as you will know, if you've bought any figures, they tend to be quite expensive for not very many. You know, if you want a lot of people, it soon adds up. So uh, I saw these on eBay. You know, the the knock ones and the uh, the, the backman ones tend to be about. A pound for for what work out about a pound for one person. So I saw these on eBay for sort of four or five pounds for a, a hundred, and thought, yeah, right. <laughs> but I put put in a couple of bids and and won them. And I mean, there are dozens of them that came, and they were all right. Some were terrible mouldings that just looked like aliens. Uh, some were completely unpainted. But, you know, I was obviously expecting, you know, I wasn't expecting the sort of quality of the ones. I think these are, I can't remember whether these are knock ones or uh, Batman scene craft ones. But yeah, I literally just had to stick these down. Whereas these, I sort of picked the best mouldings and uh, had to get the paints out again and uh, I think pretty much all of these I've re repainted which was very very fiddly again scale size comparison <laughs> very difficult to paint I mean there's no faces on them I just didn't even attempt that uh, but I'm, I'm pleased with how they've turned out really and so I've got the knack of it after a few goes so I painted those up, picked the best ones and uh, and stuck them down. And I'm quite pleased with how that's turned out. So there's an overview for you. Um, and that's where we are. Next, clearly uh, got to finish off the bus stop here. So when that printer cartridge comes, I'll uh, get the... I'll probably build the uh, scale scene shelter and use it as a bus shelter. Uh, what else have I got to do? Yeah, finish off the static grass there. Finish off that little bit. Uh, grass, probably grass around here. Maybe leave a few patches of concrete showing around the um, signal box, just so it looks like it's on some concrete foundations, perhaps. Or maybe just grass it all, I'm not sure. We'll see. But yeah, there's that to do. Um, then the only other bit is 
I'll probably fence off the back of the brewery and just grass the area here by the tunnel and do some kind of car park in the brewery maybe add a few more touches to that then well I think I might try a lighting project just light one of the buildings because that's something I haven't done and then it's weathering I want to weather the track and uh, things like weather the uh, tunnel entrances and just generally I think I'm going to do all the weathering weather some of the buildings do it all in one go as one sort of update because I haven't really done any uh, apart from the scrap scene over there I haven't really done anything in terms of weathering so still debating whether to get an airbrush or not because I haven't got one at the moment but uh, yeah that's uh, that's the plan and that's where we are so uh, thank you very much for watching the update I will see you soon